Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first ever AkumaCast. My name is Andrew Downey. I'm here live with uh, some of our more interesting guests. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the AkumaCast is going to be a nerd podcast based in and around AkumaCon. So first of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors, the WAC Cafe in Galway and AkumaCon, NUIG's Irish anime and manga convention. Joining me here today is uh, James the Jackhammer Broderick. He was uh, a special guest for today because he was the ex con, ex -con director of AkumaCon. So James, would you like to say hello? Hello, everybody. Uh, secondly, we have uh, Jim Fitzgerald, who I will be calling Fitzy for this entire podcast due to his nickname. Uh, Fitzy is a co-PRO for AkumaCon, and uh, he's joining us as you know as as himself. What's the crack, ladies and gentlemen? How are you getting on? And uh, next we have Michael Crampton, who was the previous auditor of uh, NUIG Anime and Manga. He's joining us as a expert in some would say panty and stocking. <laughs> I uh, I quite like show and call myself an expert, but yes, yes, I like it a lot. Uh, how are you doing, everybody? <laughs> and uh, of course, as I said already, I'm Andrew, and uh, I'm the uh, pro PRO of AkumaCon. Today I went to see uh, Iron Man 3, just to get it started off. Uh, I think it was a great film. I'm not going to give away any spoilers because I know it's quite new and you kind of have to wait a few weeks before you can kind of talk about it. But uh, while I was at the cinema, I did notice that uh, the, War, the War Z is coming out soon. Oh, yeah. And uh, for those of you who don't know, World War Z is based on a book by Max Brooks. Um, he's also the writer for the Zombie Survival Guide, which for me has become a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, for all kinds of zombie enthusiasts, it looked like a match made in heaven because the book is based around certain people trying to survive in the confounds of the apocalypse. It goes from celebrities to army to, at one point, a blind monk, which is pretty awesome. So, guys, uh, have any of you actually read any of the books? Yep, I've read Survival Guide and World War Z. And, and 50 of you? I've uh, had a leaf through the Survival Guide, all right, but uh, it's been young since I've actually picked it up. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. That's great, no worries. And, uh, Michael, have you had a look at them at all? Uh, I've never looked at the survival guide, although I do have, it's not that man fun, it's a different one, it's just like, the, it's effectively what I like call the big book of zombies, <laughs> but it, it's the same uh, basic thing, like it goes through like the history of where the kind of idea of zombie came out and stuff like that, but I'm more related, no, I have looked at the trailer and it looks pretty decent, I'm not sure if Brad Pitt in a zombie movie will work, I hope it does, but hopefully. Well that was my, that was my next point, like, <laughs> I, 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 I was a bit big fan when I saw this movie coming out I had my little geeky moment I was like dude this is this is gonna be epic I'm gonna have to go see this film and then I saw the trailer so I, I sent you guys the trailer and uh, I'm just gonna ask you guys just to sum up in like two or three words what you think this trailer is gonna be so so James what did you think when you saw this trailer I think this is not the book I read <laughs> exactly uh, right Fitzy go on Mommy, what's martial law? <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, that the, if, if you haven't seen the trailer, I highly recommend just going and checking it out. That is when, uh, for some reason, Brad Pitt's daughter does not understand what martial law is and uh, poses the question in a very awkward manner. Michael, did you do actually watch the trailer? I have actually watched it. Why do you question this? I have. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, as I said, I haven't like read books or anything, so the trailer itself looks good. So from what I'm gathering for everyone else, it's probably better if you haven't read the books, <laughs> if you go see the movie. <laughs> exactly. I think I think Michael I think Michael kind of hit the nail on the head there. But uh, for I I think for someone who's read the books and then going back to look at it, it's what you call resonance. It's the same way as for when people you know read the Harry Potter books and then watched the Harry Potter movies. They kind of went, oh, that's different, or they've left that out. But with this movie, this is based on a book that follows the lives of many different types of characters over like a huge range of countries and timelines. But when you look at the movie trailer, it doesn't really quite capture that sense of we're being overwhelmed bit by bit, you know? Like, uh, I remember I read recently an article uh, from Brad Pitt when he was asked why they got rid of the slow zombies and replaced them with the more kind of modern and popular fast-moving infected, you know? And uh, he, he said that people don't like slow zombies because you can't build suspense with slow zombies. And for me, that's kind of like a kick in the nads because I've watched old zombie movies I've seen, you know, The Dawn of the Dead and everything, the originals. And yeah, slow zombies are scary. And uh, it, it's interesting, actually, because I did my research into this and uh, it kind of just said that uh, 
You know, you know the movie uh, Twenty Eight Days Later. Yep. Yeah. That is actually the uh, theorized amount of time it would take if one human being bit two human beings, and then those two human beings bit two human beings. That is the amount of time given for it to spread the entire world. Is twenty eight days. Well, um, I don't know. There's definitely some sort of uh, mathematical equation that we can actually try and put together to see how many zombies could uh, be uh, to could be spawned over a 28 day period. But uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I did add junior cert maths. So, oh, oh no, <laughs> I did yeah, pass I'm, maths for the leaving. I, so uh, that I, pretty much sums that up, really. I, I I admit I am not good at math, but uh, I trust that others have done it for me. But uh, in this in this case. Like, when I see a film that's, like, one one of the key things in the book for me was where the American army are pinned down in uh, Hope, the town Hope, and uh, they're basically surrounded by these zombies, and the, they manage to pile these dead zombies up high enough to form walls. Serious? Wow. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I think that would be an amazing piece of cinematography, just to see the kind of desperation that these men have. Like, these men are trapped in the center of a town, Literally, with bodies piling up around them, they completely removed that scene from the movie. Apparently, apparently, that's not going to appear in the movie because these were slow movers. I can't see them being able to pile fast zombies at all. So that's kind of a big hit for me. I think that's going to kind of throw things out of balance a little bit. But uh, like Fitzy, when you saw that trailer, did it did it look like a gritty kind of like you know suspense filled horror movie, or did it look like another Brad Pitt action movie? Um, after watching the trailer now, I have to say that uh, it did actually uh, pique me curiosity quite a bit. Um, I mean, it's really, I mean, how can you sum up what would be probably about 90 to 100 minutes of uh, action in about two minutes? I mean, uh, you know, your average trailer is what, two to three minutes anyways. So, uh, but what I saw anyways did get me kind of interested to see more because uh, to be fair, um, and this is a bit of a, how should we say, a controversial point to make, but um, if Brad Pitt could do a hell of a job as your man in Snatch, I think he could actually uh, carry this one anyways. And I mean, uh, what more do you want as well? There's a uh, blind monk in it. Uh, that's that's true. I, 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 love, I love that movie, Snatch. That's a great mm -hmm. film. So, so, Michael, you've never read the books, but when you look at you know the trailer for the movie, um, what what does it say to you? Does it say the kind of same thing as Fitty? Will it will it be like an action film, or do you kind of get the gritty horror? I really hope it's going to be gritty horror, but like it's really hard to tell. Like with Twenty Eight Days Later, that's okay. For one, I just like to say right now, I don't consider it a zombie film. It, it's one of my favorite films, but I'm just gonna yeah, purist, whatever. Um, but like with that, they have fast movies on me, etc., etc. Uh, but it is a very much pretty horror film. This, I think, came across more as action in the trailer. But as Fitzy was saying, it's really hard to tell unless yeah. you actually see it. But one thing I would like to mention between like fast and slow movie zombies, because I'm a really big fan of zombie movies, I think the reason people like um, switch, well, people have started switching to kind of fast movie zombies, is thing that it it adds a more uncontrollable element to it because you think about the zombie as like an opponent itself it is not that scary really like if you consider uh, like a properly organized army or thing trying to contain the situation it's relatively easy to control yeah but part of the horror and terror came from that this is a really easy situation to control but we're terrified and we keep screwing up and it keeps spreading yeah yeah See, the, th the thing is, like, I, I get what you're saying, that, uh, you know, an individual zombie by itself isn't, you know, very threatening. I understand that. But when you look at shows like The Walking Dead, I like what they did where they brought the, uh, the hordes, you know, where the mm -hmm. cities had just been emptied of food. Mm -hmm. So the zombies just started to walk, you know, in a direction mm -hmm. of food. And, uh, like, I liked that kind of way of taking it because that was something I'd not seen or thought of before, yeah, you know, yeah. what happens when the city's emptied out. Because it's like, for example, if a zombie apocalypse were to happen, we'll take our local town of Galway. Uh, that's, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll go for student population alone. That's 17,000 students. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, my, my, my first thought would be to leave the city. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think that's everyone's everyone's key plan is to get out of the city as quick no, as possible. We'll we hold up. Know. We'll hold up in Roshin. We'll drink our way through it. 
<laughs> It'll be fine. I think the idea of locking yourself inside a pub to get you is well, I mean, the fact is, if you actually do get as hammered as all that, you could, you'd be probably able to blend into the population. Anyway, they wouldn't even touch off you at all. Wow, wouldn't even wouldn't even notice you swaggering by. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, that's, I, 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 think, I, think, yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's I think that's actually that's, that's some good points. But uh, I know like everyone should like you know everyone has a zombie plan nowadays. Everyone has an idea for it, and uh, you know it's just like yeah, it's 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 common just to get out of the city. And I think it was. Um, what film was it recently? Oh, I started watching a series called uh, Revolution. And the whole concept of it is when all power to everything that is battery powered runs out. So nothing has any power anymore. Just suddenly one day it just turns off. And the one of the opening lines to the show is people tried to stay in the cities. The smart people left. The people who tried to stay and survive died quickly. <laughs> you know, because it's like people, people, people in cities that you're confined to a limited amount of resource like you're trapped there and that's the way it's going to be but with the the war z what you see is those cities quickly become just dead zones like they're just roaming with the streets and they, they're like they're just cordoned off you just don't go there anymore you don't go near them and i admit in 28 days 20 weeks later sorry when they when we saw the the london crisis where you know one guy spread it to the entire city of london again i think that that really speaks for the kind of quarantine kind of you know argument where is it better off that they're faster or slower? Personally, I want to see some slow zombies. If this was a zombie apocalypse, I want some slow guy. I can just hit him in the head with a baseball bat and run away. I don't want who can I don't want one who can chase me over a car. <laughs> you know. Well, you do uh, re you do realize though that if it's a zombie uh, epidemic, anyway, so you'd be basically just uh, looking over your shoulder all the time, anyway. So it doesn't matter how fast or slow they move, you know, you're always going to have that fear in the back of your head, like that. Yeah, that you know, yeah. you're down in the kitchen making a cup of coffee or doing whatever. You yeah. turn around and uh, where your neighbor used to be cutting the grass or uh, baiting the children or whatever else, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It was, a, it, was a wee, it was a wee horde of zombies coming your way, and they could, could be coming at snail's face. They could be just tearing, tearing ours up towards you, but you know, you, you're still kind of in, um, in a whole world of trouble. So um, yeah, you're, you're aware that they're coming. I mean, that's uh, that's my point though, because there was nothing in that trailer that kind of gave that sense of kind of like you know, that kind of sense of they're coming. You know, like even if it's slowly coming, there's no sense of you know, they're on their way, you know, like, and I understand the War Z does cover the event, like when it, when it starts, like the starting point in China and it just suddenly like bursts from there. But at the same time, you, you'd want to expect that even during like the great panic, it's a big part of the book is the great panic where just everyone goes completely mental because this is happening and no one wants to be in a crowd of anyone and all this kind of stuff. But even then you'd still kind of think, you know, you'd, you'd want to see even in the trailer just kind of like a little bit of that kind of suspense that that builds. But I, I don't know. I, I didn't read any of that from it, but maybe I'm just overanalyzing things a little bit, you know. But that's what we're here for, the Akuma cast, to, you know, talk about this kind of stuff. So there you go. <laughs> Overanalyze all the things. Oh, yeah. Actually, one question, one question. Most yeah. terrifying thing to be doing when a zombie suddenly just appears, either one or many. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I would say most terrifying thing to be doing is plumbing. I imagine that if you're in a sewage tank when shit starts to go down, literally and figuratively, <coughs> that's that's a bad place to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, 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 I definitely think so. And either, either that or uh, you know Jurassic Park style on the toilet, kind of bad way to go. It's 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 interesting though, you know, like to see. Like, I know Brad Pitt does take on some kind of unusual roles. Like, we've seen him in Mr. and Mrs. Smith, where he was an assassin. We've seen him in Fight Club, where he played Tyler Durden, you know, the kind of other side to a nut job. We've seen him in a lot of different things, but I'm really curious to see whether he can pull off the kind of... I, I, I'm, I kind of shiver to say gritty hero in a zombie movie, because we've had quite a few of those already. But, yeah, I, I think that's what he's going to be going for. You know, I think, I think that's kind of, yeah. 
where we're, where we're going to be heading with it. So yeah, so I think yeah, I think, I think we covered some good points. I know I know I know James is having a little bit of trouble with his mic at the moment, but uh, I'm sure he'll join us in a second. <laughs> but uh, so so the next thing next thing I wanted to talk about here was uh, just. I sent you guys a link to uh, some some gaming things because there's a lot coming out uh, like at the moment in the next couple of weeks, the next couple of days. So, have any of you been looking at the new Pokemon? Yeah. Fitzy, have you seen have you seen any any of it yet? I actually will have a look at it right now. <laughs> Don't worry. Fitzy, not not doing his homework. Oh. Ah, <laughs> uh, here, listen, Jesus uh, Christ! I'm this. very excited about Go Gosh. I like Go Gosh. <laughs> that, that's that's what actually I was going to talk about because I see that uh, in 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 the latest uh, in a Kotaku article quite recently they talked about how in now some of the Pokemon you'll be able to interact a little bit differently. We've seen over the years from like when when I was you know first got into it we had red and blue and yellow, and I remember I had yellow, no one else had yellow, but what made mine different was you had Pikachu following you around everywhere. And that, for me, was something really cool. Then, of course, they brought back that feature in, like, Soul Silver and the gold, the remake of gold. And now they kind of have, you know, this, this whole new thing where you ride on the back of your Pokemon. And my question to you, gentlemen, is how awesome is that? And can I ride a Magikarp on land? <laughs> <laughs> you know... You know, all, all you'll see is just you know you'll go to get up, you go to saddle up your magic card and it'll just be sorry splash isn't effective right now. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is goodness. not the place to use that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... In a department store, you know you, you can just imagine now just a a twelve year old in a department store saddled to a fish just lying on its side flapping around. <laughs> curb, 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 curb. This is not the place to use that. Oh, you're not even here and you know what I'm doing. You didn't know if I was male or female when you first met and, me. And, and you'll just have, you'll just have I, I, I have no idea what the professor is going to be, so I'm just going to say Professor Oak. You'll just have Professor Oak calling you up on your Pokedex, just going to you, uh, uh, what, what are you doing? Are you, are you trying to ride a fish on land in an elevator? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's definitely I, I definitely think I'm going to have a few hours of amusement just trying to find places not to ride my go into you know like I, I'm sure they'll bring back the familiar side of you know the lavender town kind of you know creepiness uh, but you know they, they always have the one place that's got like the cemetery where it introduces the ghost Pokemon so I just want to ride a goat through a cemetery <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's the way to go. I think that's the way to uh, really get Pokemon kind of back into the the real world. <laughs> sure, if you want to do that in real time, you can come up here to Dundalk. There's plenty of cemeteries, and I'm sure there's plenty of goats around here anyway, so we can actually make that happen. <laughs> well, if if, if or we at do, the very least, or at the very least, we could bring into Ridley's anyways, and I'm sure you'll find a few goats inside there anyways. So. Oh, burn! burn. <laughs> well, then, so, uh, I'm trying not to get too hyped about the Pokemon yet because I know they're going to take my dreams and smash them by making the Firestarter fire up fighting. Well, I, I, have, I have the greatest news ever, and it's that in the new Pokemon, you get to pick your Pokemon's hairstyle. <laughs> nice! <laughs> yes, it is, it is true. It is confirmed that you can uh, change little pieces about your starter Pokemon. So uh, I was going to pick Chespin just because Chespin is an adorable squirrel. I have nothing against, you know... Grass types, but yeah, he's he's awesome. So I just want to I just want to see if I can just give him an afro. Just think Probably. rock in the fro would be a way to go. Mohawk. Yeah. <laughs> Mohawk. <laughs> what about that but, old uh, evergreen chestnut, the mullet, you know, shave the sides, don't touch the back. <laughs> <laughs> Have your real like business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> <laughs> All of the ladies life is know where you're going. <laughs> uh, oh god. Uh, I, I actually that actually just just reminded me. Have all of you seen the new Mew three, or whatever they're calling yeah, the new yeah, Mew two? Yeah, yeah, it, um, it's it's yeah. awful. I don't Call like out. the redesign. It's Call it's out. just like uh, uh, I don't know. I don't like I, it. <laughs> I I personally like the design, but what well what ruins it for me and everyone else is that you know it's just we got Mewtwo and we were lazy. But he comes with a nice carrying handle now. That that is true. That is true for like you know. He's portable. If, yeah, I mean, if you're, you need to fly somewhere, and just like you don't have Pokemon to fly, so it's like I, I can stick him in the overhead kind of carriage. 
Wonder if they can break. <laughs> I know one of the one one of the one of the kind of newer things that I was looking at is just like the whole like I, I look at Mewtwo, I look at Mew, and I know the whole Ditto kind of backstory, and it kind of just looks like me that Ditto somehow evolved into some kind of vampiric lamprey, and it just latched <laughs> itself to his face, and his tail looks like it's on his head now, like he just it just looks upside down. They're just like. You know, they must have been having a staff meeting. They're like, guys, guys, we need a new legendary. What haven't we done in a while? Mew. Yeah, we kind of went, went a place with that for a while and then kind of dropped it completely in replace of 36 other legendaries. Moltres for life. <laughs> but, uh, and then, then they're just like, you know, what, what can we do here? Well, you see his tail. <laughs> Let's put it on his head. Yeah. High Flander. fives all around. Call innovation, me. ladies and gentlemen. Flander. That is what we call innovation right there. What you need to think of is, tails don't grow from there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, look at a picture of Mewtwo and you'll see it. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard the... This, uh, this, this is going dark and dangerous places. Yeah, we're not, we're not going there. Uh, it, just, just because I haven't said it, actually, uh, yeah, this is the first episode of the Akumacast, so if you want to hear more of this, uh, just just wait soon, we'll, we'll have more out soon. Uh, but the, uh, this, this is kind of, we're, we're not really age rating this, so... People will say what they want to say, and uh, we take no responsibility for any of the actions of the cast of the Akuma cast. Uh, the opinions said on this are for the idiots who upset them. <laughs> Rated N. Rated yes. N for no one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no one, no one should ever hear this. But, uh, you know, what because people are listening. Uh, once, once we actually get this show uh, like, you know, started, once we get a few episodes under our belts, we are going to be doing uh, live streaming, which means you know, people who want to contribute to the podcast can send us questions, and we'll do our best to answer them. We're going to have different guests on, and we'll just be this us for the whole time, although I'm going to be here because I'm the host of the show. So, uh, you know, and uh, of course, for those of you who don't know, I just want to give a little shout out to the man in the wings right now, Niall Finn, the, uh, co- the, the con director for Kumcon this year. He's our, uh, he's our, he's, he's glorious backstage. leader. He's, he's backstage right now, running the show quietly, like the Illuminati would. But, uh, you know, he's just making sure we're keeping on track, all that kind of stuff. And now he's screaming at me. He's screaming at me right now because I mentioned him, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to talk about what he's sending me right now, but yeah. Oh, oh my. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, one, no one look at the chat box. So, so guys, um, I I'm just going to put keep my eyes off it. <laughs> <laughs> calm down, Fitzy. Calm down. I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. So for those, for, so guys, have have any of you played? Um, I, I'm sure you know. There's a lot of people out there who are fans of Metal Gear Solid. So so are you guys? Have you guys played any Metal Gear Solid games? Have you played like you know any of them at all? I have played three minutes of the original one. What? Yeah, basically. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, what? Well, uh, raid someone. <laughs> that, that that barely oh, counts as oh playing. My, I'm oh sorry. My. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to ask you to leave the podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I have played Peace Walker, both Portable Ops, uh, Acid, which was the Metal Gear Solid card game for PSP. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've beat Metal Gear Solid 3, and I'm currently doing a replay of Peace Walker on the, uh, on the HD collection. So... I, I, I'm a big fan. I haven't got it yet, but I'm a big fan of uh, Metal Gear Rising. And I, there's a little there's a little thing coming out. I think it's this week, which is the Blade Wolf DLC. Uh, Blade Wolf is a character in the game who is a big mechanical wolf. He's an AI, and as his name implies, he carries a chainsaw on his tail. <laughs> as an function. So you know it, it's pretty cool. So I decided, you know, in my infinite insanity, to actually look and see what the closest things we have to having these kind of AI augmentations, and I was surprised to find out there's been a lot of work into the whole thing of you know robotic attachments and all that kind of stuff. So you know it's 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 pretty cool. We've got like uh, arms that can juggle ping pong balls and all that kind of stuff now. But I think the one thing that really stood out for me was Japan's diesel-powered mecha robot. <laughs> I have heard of this. <laughs> yes. Um, if if any of you are curious as to what this is, if you go to thisiswhyimbroke.com. You can buy one right now. We'll wait. We'll just wait. We'll just wait. We'll give you five minutes. Hang on. Just, just, just. Yeah? You're looking at the page there? Looking at the page? 
Looking at the diesel power mecha robot. You oh, you 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 awing at its eight foot size and twenty three mile an hour speed limit. What kind of <laughs> mileage does it get? I have absolutely <laughs> no idea. I know it costs somewhere in the in, in the millions. Uh, but I, I just laughed when it said diesel powered. <laughs> I was just so basically they took a Ford transit van, stood <laughs> it up and made it walk as a mecha robot. And I thought that was something beautiful. And uh you know, it's 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 funny because, you know, with movies like Iron Man and, you know, the sort of like Iron Man Two especially where it showed the kind of arms race into these mecha mecha suits between Hammer and Stark Industries. I, I was quite you know, I wasn't really, you know, expecting there to be an actual arms race to the first kind of battle ready mecha robot. So that's pretty cool. I was like, yeah, that's that's something interesting. So everybody go and have a note to that. I believe I heard somewhere that uh, Japan has a fund not to build a giant robot for, for war, but to build a giant robot to fight other robots that other countries might build. That is amazing. <laughs> That's just, it's not an act of war, it's an act of defense against future war. You see, people have really obviously learned from the nuclear deterrent strategy. It was just, it was a great idea, we should bring yeah. it into so, other areas. So basically what you're saying, what you're saying is, Ireland needs giant mecha robots. That's yes. what we're saying right now. <laughs> At the podcast, we all agree that Ireland needs a giant mecha robot. Chicks dig giant robots. They do. <laughs> I dig giant robots. We dig James, giant robots. James, therefore, is a chick. <laughs> oh, God. The, yes, He's the prettiest uh, girl I've ever seen. I liked I liked the uh, subtle mega sex at our reference there. That was pretty sweet. But uh, so so if if we if Ireland had a giant mecha robot, what would they name said giant mecha robot? Like Seamus or something. I don't know. <laughs> that is the worst name for a giant <laughs> mecha robot. I'm and sure it'd be like, an acronym for something as well. Anti Mary. Anti Mary. Because everyone has take Anti like Mary. A second to think about it. It's like <laughs> Seamus. <laughs> That's like the most stereotypical. Like, give me an Irish name, Seamus. No, I'm t I'm telling you, you an Andrew, Anti Mary, because everyone has an Anti Mary. <laughs> and so, so basically, you know, like America will have, you know, the Hextech Super Destroyer Mark V versus Ireland's Anti Mary. <laughs> it's not hey, exactly threatening. You, you it's don't, not exactly apparent. You don't fuck with Mary. She'll break your face. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, I, I I cannot honestly see that kind of taking off very soon anyway. But uh, so yeah, I if could, you, if you I could call it uh, Scrius. I think uh, Scrius is Irish to destroy. So it could be like an acronym for something S dot C dot R dot I dot O dot S or something like that. You know, that, so that uh, is sick. See, my goal. That's the kind of contribution we need. <laughs> Seamus is there. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're just like Seamus. No, no, oh, this man, this time. man right here, <laughs> I actually looked up the Irish definition for destruction. Google Translate you, is your friend. I salute you. <laughs> oh, I God, love you, Google you Translate. <laughs> you Gosh. ruined it with the Google Translate. <laughs> yeah, listen, I haven't a word of Irish. <laughs> ah, well, it's grand. Ah, well. Well. You know, but, uh, I barely so, have yeah, a word uh, of English. So, uh, I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad we managed to actually... Uh, we, we somehow managed to segue from the Metal Gear Rising DLC into anti Mary. Ireland's giant mecha robot. <laughs> so that's that's always good. It's always good to have a nice a nice segue. So uh, before before I bring us into our next section, uh, I actually have uh, have a few questions for you guys. Yeah. So so, uh, so 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 James, uh, what 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 do you what what what's the next kind of uh, convention you're heading to? Um, probably Arcade Con. I I am also heading to Arcade Con. Fitzy, are you are you going? More than likely, I've got to see how my finances are looking, but I'll definitely throw a couple of quid aside for it. All right, and, and, and Michael, are you going to be going to ArcadeCon? I may be working security at ArcadeCon, depending. <laughs> so so there you go, folks. If, if any of you are at ArcadeCon, we'll all be there. So, uh, you know, none of you will have a clue who we are, and uh, we certainly won't make a big show of it, but, yeah, you never know. Maybe maybe okay. we'll say hi. Maybe we'll invite you to come on. You never know. Things, okay. things happen. And the drunkening will happen. Yes, the drunkening will happen. But, uh, it's probably guaranteed to happen with me anyways. You know what I'm like at conventions. <laughs> Fitzy you there, you know, some, uh, establishing his reputation early on. <laughs> of course, of course. 
<laughs> you know, I came, I came to wreck the gaff and watch some Chinese cartoons. That's uh, that's. Uh, <laughs> I need to get that. Pr- I think we need to get that. Pr- or, um, I think that needs to be our no- new slogan from now on. We came to wreck the gaff and watch some Chinese cartoons. So there you go. Fitty, I don't know how to break this to you, but uh, anime is Japanese. <laughs> Mind blown. Oh my Just, god. Oh god. All this time doing this and you never knew. <laughs> I know, oh, no. I, I, I'm very innocent, like, I'm very naive to the way of the world, and I'm just after having my mind, my mind just destroyed and my heart broken as well, so I, <laughs> I'm sure I'll get over it. Ah, it's grand. But, uh, so, 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 if we're all going to ArcadeCon, then the, the next question obviously has to be, what, 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 what kind of things are you looking forward to? Like, I've had a little bit of a look myself, and, uh, the one thing I'm really psyched about is the, uh, RPG of Bioshock, you know, Garden of Eden. I think that's going to be, or Fall of Eden, sorry. I think that's going to be really sick. I, I have no idea how it's played. I have no idea what it's going to be. But I'm just excited by the prospect of getting to uh, actively play a big daddy. Because that's, that's going to be sick. So, uh, so, so, James, I'm going to direct this to you. We're going to go in order again. Just So, so James, are you, uh, what, what are you looking forward to about our kick on this year? Uh, really the convention vibe. Like, I'm not sure about specifics because I didn't think I'd be able to go unless I got a job. But uh, now it's kind of like... Conventions are fun. People hang out, etc. Yeah. So, so you're going mostly just for the convention part of the convention. Yeah, uh, no, the specifics, just the general air. All right, that's that's pretty cool. And like you've you've helped to run like you you basically built a Kubicon. Like a Kubicon is your baby, you know. And uh, baby. so so yeah, it pretty much is. You know, there's no there's no need to deny it now. But uh, you know, if if you uh, kind of had like you know, if if, if you were saying that. Uh, one of, like oh, overall, would you like, would you say that like a Kumacon over the last few years has kind of built up its kind of atmosphere? Yeah, I think a Kumacon has always just pushed for uh, being a very friendly atmosphere con. You know, yeah, we're well, we're, we're we're out of the way, so we're not we're not the biggest convention. We're not we don't have like all the most amazing stuff, but we try and do things differently, and we try and you know. Keep it casual. Keep it classy. Which, which is why we're here today. <laughs> exactly. Because sometimes we just decide, you know, let's get some people together and talk exactly. shit on the internet. Yeah, and do, do, do things just a little, little bit differently. Try, try something new. We so, realize some of our conversations could be really hilarious to people if they could only hear, so we just record them. <laughs> that's, pretty much, that's pretty much the way we're going with this. So, Fitzy, <laughs> I, I know, like, from, from, from the rumors I've heard, Fitzy, you go to, like, every convention in Ireland. The rumors are indeed. The, <clears throat> excuse me. The rumors are indeed fact. I've pretty much staffed at nearly all of them now. So uh, I've been to Rocon back home in Limerick, Erta, Nam, Arcade, Akuma Khan, and Okazoku Khan is coming up in Cork next year as well. So yeah, I've been pretty much at all of them, and uh, it's always great crack because there's always a great vibe. Everyone's just up for having a laugh, you know. So. And and is that like is the reason you choose to like staff so many of the cons simply just because of the atmosphere because of the buzz we get? I oh, definitely. I mean, it's um, it's rare and righteous. You get like you get a whole just over the course of a weekend. You just meet so many great people, and uh, you just have the best conversations with them as well. And uh, and even staffing as well. I have to say, uh, I've met some of my best friends as well people that um that i might have met that i only meet maybe about three or four times a year but i always look forward to seeing them so uh, and uh it's it's always there's always uh, cool stuff happening at uh, conventions as well gaming tournaments cosplay the, in, the invariable uh, slide down to the pub when everybody's uh <laughs> shift comes to an end <laughs> hey, it's great yes. crack like so when, when the evening when the evening progresses towards the end of the day things do usually lead to the pub as and, darkness uh, falls, so the craziness begins. If, any, anyone out there, if anyone out there right now listening uh, has, has never been to a convention, I, I think, you know, just, just speaking for all of us here, I hope you guys don't mind, but I, I would say definitely go to a con. If you've ever considered going to a con, if you're a fan of anime and manga, and you just want to meet people who are, you know, like-minded to yourself, jo- jo- you know, join your local society, get involved in conventions, do a bit of staffing, and the people you'll meet will always be amazing. Like, I, I know since I started going to conventions, I started, you know, running my running my videos and everything. I've met people, I've met party productions, I've met winners for, like, winners of, like, the cosplay contest and Ericon and everything. I've met, you know, I, I've met, 
our, our, our fabulous guest this year, you know, and all, all that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> and then Niall and then, and then is screaming at me again. <laughs> but anyway, but uh, yeah, you never know. We, we, we'll, we'll see who we can get. And we're going to be, uh, we're going to be asking, uh, you know, guys, guys from some of the other cons to maybe get involved. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how we get on. But, you know. I think I, th I think it's uh it, it's it's something that everyone should try at least once is going to convention, and uh, I know arcade con this year is going to be uh, particularly fun, just be simply from you know the volume of guests, the amount they have going on, and uh, it's not a con I've well. attended. Well, yeah, well it's it's not a it's not a convention I've attended before, and uh, I know the first time I attended the Kuma con I had really great crack. Uh, first time I went to Akuma, I had really great crack. So you know, I, I know that I'm going to be meeting a lot of familiar faces down at the con. And like like Fitzy says, you know, it, it's it's a great way to meet people. Like you only meet people at conventions sometimes. Like that's how me and Fitzy have met. Is 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 at Akuma con staffing. So you know, if if you want to meet some like real good people, you want to have a good time, you want to you know experience something a little bit different, attend your local convention. You know, and uh, and of course, come to come to Akuma con. You know, we know you're out there. We know you're listening. Come to a group. Lampooning. Yeah. Pl plugging it in there. You know, as 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 you guys know, Kumicon is our official sponsor. All of us are involved here a little bit with the Kumicon or a lot with the Kumicon. So you know, we're 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 we've got to promote ourselves. It's got to be a little bit of self promotion. Hope you guys don't mind. We're not going to be doing too much of it, but there you go. And uh, yeah, so it's 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 been it's been a lot of fun. You know, hope 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 everyone is you know enjoying themselves listening to this. And uh, so I'm I'm going to bring us on to our. Uh, Possibly my favorite section, because, you know, I was super hyped to hear this. Uh, in, in terms of anime manga, there's been a lot of, you know, restarts and reboots over the last, you know, kind of, you know, summertime, things kind of start up again. And I'm super excited to announce the restart of the ever nefarious One Piece dub series on Toonami. Yes. <laughs> yes, get hyped. Everyone get hype, I know. Uh, starting on uh, at 1 a.m. on Sunday, May 18th, is going to be the re-announcement of the One Piece dub series with an all-new rapping pirate uh, like opening. It's going to be sick. I know a lot of people complain about you know the dub version. A lot of people will complain the whole. I, we, we're we're gonna. That's an argument for another time, maybe between yeah. subbed and dubbed. But I, I definitely think that uh, it's something that everyone has to watch at least once. Just to just to get that opening, you know, just that 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 opening alone is is worth it. Ah, it was uh, wacky. Oh, very, it is very wacky, and uh... and it, and it's it's something it's something that I'm really glad to see coming back because One Piece was one of the first kind of well, it was kind of one of the first newer anime that I got into. Like I know it's not new, but you know, before then I had only ever seen the first or second series of Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z. Which is the greatest anime of all time? Shut up, all of you. Haters. What? <laughs> why watch? Why watch? Why watch only like you know a hundred good shows when you can watch one show forever? Exactly. <laughs> you know, I I, I I don't want anyone giving out about One Piece. I am a fan of One Piece, and I I will not strictly defend One Piece to the death or anything. But it's got its good points. Oh, yeah. It's got its memorable characters and, you know, its clever little moments. I'm sure you know? it does, but I'm also sure you could distill its good points <laughs> down to, like, a good 24 to 50 episodes. Ah, I yeah. detect a hater. <laughs> you know, in, in case anyone listening can't tell, I despise shows that keep going forever. <laughs> Bleach. <laughs> yeah. Naruto. One Piece. Hey, oh, to be fair. Fairy tale. To be fair. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> fairy tale whoa, whoa. and Naruto. Are we got a badass over here. Somebody, uh, somebody said something naughty about uh, fairy tale. Yeah. Uh, to to be yeah. fair, fairy tale and Naruto. Fairy tale's over now, and Naruto is near the end. Like yeah. Naruto's. Now I think Naruto has four chapters remaining. Something like that. I think it was announced. I but know, can uh, you be sure? Can you no, ever be no, sure? We can never be sure. They might is, pull a Tai Kubo. They might do is, that. Yeah, is this like when Bleach was meant to end like this time last year and then they were like, no, we're going to keep it going as long as we can. Because it's, it's, Kubo it's, is not getting off this milk train anytime soon. <laughs> see, it's just like, you know, it, it, it's something that at the same time, I like Bleach. I have watched Bleach the whole time. I know, I know. Let the hate rain, let the hate rain down upon me. But it, it's a and it's just a nostalgia thing. It's something that I, I've seen grow over the last like couple of years. And it's just something that I, I, I got to the point where I saw the end of the last arc and I was like, fine, it's over now. I'm happy. It's done. And now they've introduced an entire new arc 
and it's still pretty good. It's not really bad, but it's pretty good. <laughs> but they basically made Ishigo into a zoological experiment now. Yeah, like, but see, he now makes it now makes no sense of what he is. I'm not going to give away spoilers about it because I know people are probably still reading it. But yeah, it's but it's, yeah, it's kind of gotten a little bit weird now. And what? I, I was it, happy to see it end. I, I, the little, I had the little like nostalgic teardrop roll down from my eye with the ending, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a good place to end it now. Please don't make more. <laughs> and then they did. Because, yeah, see, man. that's where, where I draw the line is like, you can have a show and it can have good points, but when I know people and they say, don't bother watching seasons three to seven because they're filler arcs, then I have an issue. And and not Niall, why are what you was back? that? I don't I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's haunted. <laughs> the podcast is haunted. The podcast is haunted. Everyone, get out now! But uh, it's the ghost of Niall past. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's the ghost version of Niall joining us here briefly. But uh, I I like to think that um I what well, see the, the opposite to that then is shows that should have gone on. And I know there's a lot of people who like for example. The one show that I'm going to regret mentioning, because I know Michael is just going to jump up now, is Panty and Stocking. <laughs> I did not like Panty Ew, and Stocking. Here we go. Um, we decided to do a, a showing of Panty and Stocking for Michael at our... NUI I'd like to mention here, market. I'd like to thank uh, the uh, NUI Galway on Gotchka <laughs> Society or for officially sponsoring it. Billy Stewart will back this up. Yes, it was it was a, it was an officially sponsored and hosted event. None of us could argue against it. But basically, that showing started off with I'm gonna say 24, 25 people, and ended with three. I was one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> I, the only reason the only reason I was still there is because I was still trying to figure out what the hell the dog was. Uh, it, so, they kind so, of explain it later to, on. Yeah, I'm I'm going to give you the floor now to make an argument as to why Panty and Stocking should not have ended. Panty and Stocking should not have ended... Well, no, the way it did end was clearly meant to be, you know, there should be a second season. Actually, actually just, just, before, just before you go, I just want to say something. The full name of this show is Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. Yes, yes. If that alone doesn't clue you in, <laughs> stop listening to the podcast. <laughs> I go get a cat scan. Actually, I know, you know that's know. slightly, you know, that's that's a little might be a little bit insulting to some people, but I understand that you're the same poop people who will say, "How does eat food and what am the sky?" <laughs> <laughs> so, but don't so even answer the question. Don't, don't even answer. Don't even answer why panty and stocking should have ended. Answer. Why panty and stocking? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because Why? Why? I'd, I'd like to quote, uh, it's a, I think, I can't remember the actual site. And actually, no, it's Mal, actually. <laughs> uh, it's a review of it, uh, probably one of the best descriptions, uh, where someone described it as an orgasm of excellence. And they described it as an orgasm of excellence. Michael, orgasm the only excellence. time he, the, I would not describe it as that, I would describe it as the nail that went right through my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 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 watched that, I watched that show and I was like, okay, okay, it's a little bit weird. I get it. It's a little bit odd. Things are a little bit backy. Oh my god, what is that Powerpuff girl doing to that guy? Oh god, no, please let it stop. I, ah, oh, Panty, you gotta love her. Uh, I will point out now that Wikipedia defines excellence as a talent or quality which is unusually good and so surpasses ordinary standards. See, I don't feel. It is, I, I do feel not feel that it is, it is unusually good in what it does, and it definitely surpasses ordinary standards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't okay. think I don't think it, it's hard for it to be better than its peers when it has no peers apart well, from pornography. Yeah, it's a pioneer. Technically, it does though, because when you're really thinking about it, like they use the same a similar art style to Powerpuff Girls, and of course, Powerpuff Girls has recently been made into an anime. So technically, they do kind of have a predecessor in that sense. But at the same time, please God, if you watch that show, don't write to us. Don't tell us how it was. Just 
just just write to Michael and leave it at that. <laughs> send him, send him, send him all of the fan mail and uh, yeah, that that will uh, be. We'll just the file, file. I'm not trying to encourage uh, alcohol consumption at all. It would make a great drinking game. Yeah, but that's that's the same. That, that, that's, <laughs> but you, see, you don't need you don't need Pantene stocking for his uh, fan service drinking game. For those of you listening right now, uh, I'm just going to explain a quick drinking game. You guys can play this at home. Um, one of the like one of the common kind of tropes that we see nowadays in anime is, of course, fan service. It's been in it since Pokemon. <laughs> you know, it's it's something we see. It's when there's either excessive cleavage or excessive manliness in a show purely for the sense of appeasing the fans and making them watch longer. But recently, there's been the announcement of the Senran Kagura series. Senran Kagura started off as a DS game that is basically all fan service, based, loosely based around the story of kind of ninjas. Uh, well, it, it, it's just starting this season. Um, I think there's only one or two episodes out. I think it might be now. Uh, but at, at the moment... Uh, there's been a, there's been an article released on Kotaku, uh, kind of reviewing it. It's uh, why Senran Kagura is the most embarrassing anime of all time. Now, if the title doesn't give away the kind of idea of the story, uh, basically the entire show has girls putting phallic in, ph- phallic things in their mouths. It's got them carrying things in their cleavage. It's got a lot of bouncing and showing of the panties. And it's 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 interesting that. You know, this this guy in the article gives uh, statistics to the account for the drinking game. So it's like every time there is a boot bounce, take a drink. Every time there's a pants shot, take a drink. That kind of thing. There was 46 boot bounces in the first episode. Again, we don't condone the actions of the guy who made this show. But if you're going to play the drinking game, please drink responsibly and don't die. This reminds me of... Uh... On TV tropes for the My Immortal page, they actually ha- let you keep record of people who have attempted the drinking game and yes. what it has led to. Uh, <laughs> uh, for, for those of you who don't know, uh, me and Fitzy are both on a, uh, I would say, a nerd comedy panel. We're on the Man of Action panel along with our fellow panelist, uh, John Burke. And one of the things we do is we go to conventions and we read terrible fan fiction. Uh, my fan oh, fiction. Oh, my fruit! <laughs> the yes, fish of Edward Cullen! Oh god, we, we've done we've done a lot of uh, bad bad fan fiction. We've done Forbidden Fruits. We've done My Immortal. But My Immortal for me is something. We haven't done My Immortal yet, though. That's the oh, thing. Well, that's no, the... well, we no, we haven't touched on it yet. But uh, coming soon to Brocon. If you're going to go to Brocon this year, keep an eye out because we'll... July the twelfth to July the fourteenth. Uh, down in the University of Limerick. Come one, come all. There you go. Come, 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 come to our panel. Adult. If you if you enjoyed if you enjoyed the podcast if you didn't enjoy the podcast and want to heckle us come to the panel we'll we'll be sure to have you but uh, yeah for those of you who don't know My Immortal is a Harry Potter fan fiction that has nothing to do with Harry Potter it is awful uh, but it's also a lot of fun to read and if you ever get the chance and want to lose some brain cells while trying to read something on the internet give it a go but yeah there is a My Immortal drinking game. <laughs> We attempted to do this once for uh, one of our society members' birthday parties. Shout out to Valerie. But uh, we, we ended up having to cut down the rules slightly because there are 40 rules and the first sentence breaks six of them. <laughs> so, you know, by, by, the, by the end of the first paragraph, you have alcohol poisoning. By the end of the first page, you're dead. It's, it's pretty extreme. So the only thing I can say is in, in terms of when you're going to be drinking with anime... Just stick to the Dragon Ball Z and uh, Fist of the North Star ones, you know. Just, 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 just stick there. And, and, but uh, so, so guys, uh, with the with the upcoming kind of uh, convention scene, with the release of this, and with all new anime and stuff coming out, what would you say is your kind of next big thing? Like, what is the one thing you're looking forward to coming out in the next season, or coming up in gaming, or coming up in movies? What, what are you going to call as your next big thing? Things. Yes, things. <laughs> I suppose the next, the next game I'm looking forward to coming out is Remember Me, but... And, like, oh, I, I really, like, I'm really looking forward to that game. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Remember Me is... Wait, actually, I might be thinking of the wrong game. I'll let, I'll let you say it. Well, what, what, which, which well Remember game? Me is, like, it's coming out on the PC next month. It is a yeah. sci-fi cyberpunk kind of game that combines, like, platforming action fighting elements with memory manipulation. Oh, that's actually pretty sick. It sounds yeah, it sounds like a really cool concept. It's the idea of, you know, people being able to digitize and experience other people's memories. Yeah. So people are buying and selling memories and 
You play as a memory hunter who has amnesia, of course. <laughs> yes, big. because that makes all of the sense. <laughs> so you go around this, messing with people's memories to. And, and is this like an A class game or is this an indie game? It's a triple A title, as far as I know. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, and and what about what about movies? What, what what's going to be the next uh, movie you're going to head to? Oh, there's a lot. I'd say probably Elysium. Elysium, and and why are you looking for? Or Pacific Rim. Or, uh, yeah, uh, I, mean, I suppose we better. I suppose we better kind of talk about that. Okay, so who wants to argue that Pacific Rim is a ripoff of Evangelion? <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I won't. I won't bother trying to defend them. Then go ahead, go on, James. Talk about freaking Pacific Rim. I don't know. I knew very little about it until I saw the trailer, and then I was just like, this just looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. Especially when he smashes the guy in the face with a, you know, cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> and what about in uh, anime? What, what what's the next uh, kind of anime you're gonna check out, or what 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 are you starting? Why on is the moment? Lavender Town music playing? Yeah, uh, what, yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> now I'll stop haunting the <laughs> podcast. Uh, our, our, uh, our 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 little backstage guy is starting to mess with us here, I think. But uh, uh, so Fitzy, for you, any uh, any st- any new stuff coming out that you want to take a look at? We'll take uh, we'll take one off you, yeah. one or two. Um. Flowers of Evil or uh, Aku no Hana, because it's weird. I actually only started watching it there not so long ago. I was through a friend of mine, uh, Ricky Sweeney. He showed me uh, an episode or two, and it was by far one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. Um, this is a short blurb now. It's basically a story of this wee lass called uh, Takeo Kazuga, who's a bookworm whose favorite book is Charles Baudelaire, Le Fleur de Mal, or The Flowers of Evil, after yeah. which the series is named. One day after school, he discovers uh, and uh, impulsively steals this gym clothes of Nanako Saiki, the classmate. Oh, no, it's actually he or she. Jesus Christ. I'm reading Wikipedia, <laughs> pardon me. The classmate he has a crush on. But then a lonely girl called Sawa Nakamura happens to catch him in the act, and all sorts of weird stuff happens. It's one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. The animation style is really, really unusual because... Uh, they actually use rotoscoping, so they actually base all the movements on real life yeah. movements, and uh-huh. it's uh, and uh, the music is fierce odd as well. The, the 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 ending theme is by far one of the most discordant things I've ever heard in my life. And I listen to a lot of really really strange music anyway, so it was well up my street. And uh, if you're if you're in the mood for a bit of a uh, mind fuck, definitely give it a look. It's a uh, great crack altogether. All right, cool. And this so, one, it only came out that it only came out this year as well. It started just back at the end of March. So. All right, okay. So it's so it's it's a fairly new season then. All right, so that's good. Yeah. So yeah, give 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 that a watch. Right, Michael. Same again. One from you. Uh, one from me. I'm mainly looking to actually watch Valerie because I haven't like I know very little of it. I just know that it's supposed to be incredibly incredibly good. And after that, I'm really just hoping to watch stuff which has been out for ages, and I keep meaning to watch it, like uh, Elf and Lead. Uh, I, I meant to watch that for ages, never watched it, and really, really want to do it. And finally, did watch it and finish it. Please don't judge me. I enjoyed the show. <laughs> <laughs> I probably don't said, worry, I, I should have said, much. please don't judge me a panty and stop me anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't don't worry. We're not here to judge you. Quietly judging him. <laughs> judging, <laughs> judging, <laughs> always judging. Oh, no, you came to so loud. Anyway, but uh, so yeah, I think I think we're just about ready to wrap up now. Oh, uh, w- one so, anime I, sh- I I meant to mention that I remembered. Uh, uh, okay. Fate Prism Iliad. It's a new oh. Fate Stay Night Fate Night anime, except it's taking the characters and making it a magical girl anime. Oh God, why? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, and with and with <laughs> that, I think we shall draw to an end. This has been the first ever uh, Akuma cast. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, this is our first time doing something like this, so we're sorry we're a little rough. We are going to get better and better as time goes along. We're gonna we'll do it tests. live. We'll do it live. We're going to do it live. Don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna be doing a lot of different things. We're gonna get a lot more uh, audience participation once once the episodes go out. So I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I hope you had a lot of fun. Of course, uh, I'm Andrew. This has been James. Say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Fitzy. See you later. Michael. And myself. <laughs>
So you know, it's it's just I I think we've all had a lot of fun here today, and uh, this is this is going to be me signing off. So TTFN, and see you next time. <laughs>